Hi, I'm Hector, and today we're going to learn about Selection Tool in Procreate. It's, you know, it's that one tool that a lot of people use to, you know, move stuff around and reshape, that kind of a thing. But we're going to use it to paint. Yeah, yeah, we're going to paint with it. And I'm going to show you how I do it. So let's get started. See up at the top right here, that S icon, tap it one time, boom. And that's gonna open up this menu at the bottom. We have four choices. So when we select something, we can either do it in ellipse form, rectangle, freehand, and automatic. And just like everything is automatic, you really don't gotta do much. And this, this is no exception. All I gotta do is just choose the shape I wanna select. So let's do this side. Boom. So everything we selected is highlighted in blue. But if we zoom in, and we still have some red fragments here. So not everything's been selected. But let me show how I can fix that. It's a lot like a color drop. All you have to do is just tap and then slide to the right. And right up here, that's where a threshold number is going to be. So you can see this number get larger and it's going to be covering more area. So let me go ahead and just tap anywhere. There we go. There's a threshold number and we're going to move to the right. And as soon as we do, we start filling it in like that. Now, because we want this side too, we have the add where the plus sign is highlighted. So let's go ahead and choose this side as well. And all we got to do is just tap one time there we go now here's a fun fact if you have color fill chosen let me go ahead and just tap it once but before i do that we're going to paint this shape any color that's up here watch tap there we go it changed to this color now this is what's super cool if we tap on the color and we just start just throttling up and down we this is a really cool way to choose color. So let's just go ahead and just leave it in Ladybug Red. Well, that's pretty good right there. I'm gonna tap there. Okay. Whatever you do, just don't tap this yet because it's gonna go back to the selection. Before we go back to color fill, tap on save and load right here. Tap it once. Boom. Hit the plus sign. There we go. Now we just went ahead and selected our selection. <laughs> and that's, uh, yeah, that's exactly what we did. We selected our selection. So we're going to have this on save. Let's go ahead and close that. We can go back to color fill, tap that once. There we go. And to accept the changes, we're going to just tap on the S one time. There we go. The changes have been accepted, and now we're in Ladybug Red. So now let's go to freehand. Let's go back to the S icon, tap it once, and choose freehand. Boom. Now freehand does exactly what you think freehand should do. Now freehand is really cool because obviously you can see that it has no restrictions of any kind. And if I tap here, boom, right there, and I choose a color because color fill still select it. It can get interesting. It does a lot of cool things. The plus sign is still highlighted, so I can go back here and I can do another one here. Tap it once, and there you go, because color fill selected. We're not too happy with that yellow. We think it should be something different. We can go ahead and just go around the color wheel and choose something we like. So that's really cool. The marching ants indicate that it's live. So we can go ahead and just you know, choose stuff based on that. So let's go ahead and just get out of this. Let me go ahead and just unselect color fill because we don't want that. Tap there. This is a good opportunity to show you what remove does. So I can draw around this. 
whatever our design was, and I can hit remove, and it goes back to its natural state. Boom. There we go. So now there is no selection. As you can see, that stripe pattern, that, that indicates that whatever is covered in stripes, it's protected. Now, in our case, the, the, the feet is not going to be part of the selection process because it is in a different layer. So let's go back to layer one. There we go. If we wanted to go back and that toolbar isn't here anymore, all we have to do is just tap and hold on the icon. It comes right back. We still have the, the add by default is always selected. So assuming the light source is up here, this is the side that I want to make a little lighter. This is how you do it. Just go around, choose kind of a crescent shape, something like that. You don't always have to tap the gray dot, but I kind of do because I'm just so used to it. Now we're going to introduce the feather option. So we tap feather one time that opens it up. It goes by percentage. So it's a really faint line, but check it out. When you do it, you slide to the right. You can see that there's like a really faint line that's being moved to make the selection just a little larger. Well, that's how much feathering we're going to do. So let's go with maybe 25%. Looks like it stayed at 26. Now, what you can't do is you can't use a color fill because if you do, this happens. There you go. That's not going to work because we want to stay on the wing, but we have too much overspill. So let's go ahead and turn that off. Boom. Break. So let's take off the color fill. Now you see this icon? It looks like a wand. Tap it once. And that's where we have our adjustments. Go ahead and choose hue, saturation, and brightness. Tap it once. And if I go to brightness and then I just move it to the right, it's going to get lighter. If I want to add a little bit more saturation, I can. If I want to give it just a different tint of color, I can. So something like this. Saturation's good. And maybe just a little less like that. That's fine. Go back to selection. So let's go ahead and just tap out. And when you tap out, you pretty much accept the changes. So tap back in. Go back to freehand, it's already chosen. Make a selection. Now let's go ahead and go to feather. Choose an amount, somewhere around there. Now let's go back to the wand, tap there. Hue and saturation, and we're gonna go darkness. See, now it's only affecting the right side. So just something like that looks good. And we're happy with that. So let's go back to selection. Now, this is where we can do something just a little different. We can invert. We can tap here, which says invert one time. Now we can go back to the wand, hue and saturation. We can play a little bit with the saturation if we wanted to. Do just a little bit of brightness, a little bit of darkness. Go with maybe a different tint of color, maybe something like that. And we're happy with that. That seemed to affect only the middle part, and that's okay. So let's go ahead and just tap there. We accepted the changes. And then if we wanted to go back to the selection tool, and then maybe on this side right here, Feather, give it an amount, something like that. Hue and saturation, tap there. Then we're gonna go a little bit on saturation, a little bit on darkness or brightness. So oh, something about right there. Tap to the S, pretty much changes that have been accepted. So that's good. The last thing I wanna show you about freehand is Although we have all this unrestrictive movement, like this, as soon as you let go and you start tapping, 
it becomes a polygon. When you need a straight line, there you go. When you need to make a corner, there you go. So, see how sharp that can be? Really cool stuff. So this is on freehand. Just do your unrestricted movements. As soon as you let go and you start tapping, it turns into polygon. Super sharp lines at that point. Very straight. And see that button right there, clear? All clear does is it, it removes the marching ants. It removes your selection. So tap one time, boom, it's gone. You can start all over again, right? Don't like it, tap another time, boom, starts all over. We can always just go into here, tap there, and remove it, start over again. That's kind of a cool thing, right? Selection, start over, remove. Even if the selection is closed, we can still tap clear. Boom. So now let's talk about the rectangle. It's pretty basic. It makes a rectangle. I'm gonna tap here so you can see the marching ants. And you can make squares too, if you wanted to, like that. So now let's go to ellipse. Let's go on the S icon, tap it once, choose ellipse. Now we have color fill chosen. That's gonna be the color that's gonna be painted on the spots that we are going to be putting on the ladybug. So let's go there and then maybe something like this, like that, and like that. Okay, let's go with that. That's our ladybug. If we wanted to go crazy and do a little more, we can. And we hit copy and paste, tap. What that does is it makes another copy. So this is our insurance. In case, in case we go too far, this is our insurance. So let's go ahead and just tap there so we don't see it. Go back to layer one, tap there one time. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Hit the plus sign for new layer. That's gonna be layer four. Go back to selection. Go back to freehand. And I'm going to draw a shape around the wing. Something like that. Tap. Since I had color fill highlighted, it filled it with that color, but I'm gonna go back to color, tap there one time. I'm gonna choose maybe white-ish color, or something like this. A little bit of a feather, almost like, you know, like a 2%, something like that. Going to go back to my layers, dial down the opacity right there. That's about 57%. And I'm going to go to overlay. There we go. All right. That looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on this side, I'm going to give it another reflection point. So hit the plus sign, tap on the S, go in and then make a selection, tap on the gray dot, go back to layers, tap on the end, dial back the opacity. So I'm going to be at 51% and I'm going to go down to vivid light. There we go. All right, so I just noticed we didn't have an antenna. Now, since I have the drawing assist on, anything I do here is gonna happen over there, or anything I do here, it's gonna happen over here. So here, let me just show you. There we go. So here's the ladybug. Now, we basically didn't use, do we use a brush? I don't think we did. So are you gonna use a selection tool to, <laughs> to do everything? I don't know, probably not. You don't have to. It's just this lesson is only to show you that you could use a selection tool in so many circumstances, but there's other tools you can use. But anyway, it's the power of the selection tool. Hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Anyway, gotta go. Bye.